working their way to the finish, and it will be Justin Ress with gold. Not swimming this morning. Here we are doing stuff with USA Swimming, but um, talk about like what happened yesterday, why he had to pull out of the meet. Yeah, so uh, what what basically just happened is that a really bad back and shoulder spasm. Uh, it's something that's happened like three or four times in yeah. my career. Um, it actually kept me out of a day at NCAA as my junior year. So, you know, it's something, it's, it's whatever. It's something that happens in the sport. Um, I think this is a meet where pushing it and maybe potentially leading to like longer term injury is definitely not not good for it. So, you know, sure. I'm just just taking it easy. Doing some behind the scenes stuff for you. So something's really cool though. I was, I was doing some like data analytics stuff up with the, the crew that does the film and, and gets the stroke rates for the national team and, and yeah. stuff like that. It was really cool. Uh, so how involved does USA Swimming pull all the athletes? I mean, in what is because you pulled out, were they more excited to you know pull you in and say, hey, you're here, like let's use, utilize you? And does do they do that on a regular basis? Honestly, it was something I kind of offered up because uh, you know not being able to swim sucks so bad. I mean, not being able to race yeah. when you know I was excited to come here. It's a very very low pressure environment. Yeah. So I think you know when it's when it's very low pressure like that, uh, you're capable of really great swims no matter how you, how your training kind of went. Yeah. So I really just wanted to be like you know somewhat involved see, see what goes on what i could help with whatever so yeah really just being around you know nothing else to do so <laughs> just just helping out yeah how's everything going with training uh you're in mission yeah yeah and how's how's training going and what's what was the world cup experience like how's the fall been yeah so uh after the the success in and stress, honestly, of the summer. Yeah. It was the busiest year of swimming I, I've had. I was all over the place. I was, I was traveling nonstop. Um, so it was, it was really, it was really tough to get back into training. Um, I took, I took a lot of measures to make sure I didn't let. First off, didn't let success go to my head. You know, mess me up in any way. Um, and with that, it was kind of tough getting both feet back into the sport. So I was just really uh, a focus on my my health as a person. Um, sometimes that growth and that health as an individual can can get in the way a little bit of, of the growth as an athlete. And sometimes, like like last year, uh, when I moved to Mission, you know, it improved myself as an athlete. So yeah. really taking taking the step back now um, in order to take who knows how many steps forward in the future, you know, five steps forward in the future, ten steps forward, whatever. Um, I think taking it easy now and focusing on myself right now will help me long term the stress of the summer is that because of the wind because of the up and down with the dq and back what what's what's behind that um you know it's just it's how life goes life's such a mess man everyone's life is a mess it's just about rolling with the ups and downs the best you can yeah. um all that stress uh all that stress can really wear you down um and maybe that's that's partially why you know i i flared up my spasm flared up this weekend just all the stress dealing with Mm. dealing with uh dealing with life really um but mostly it's just traveling i mean just traveling non-stop over the summer was yeah. tough uh but it's how it goes you know that's that's the sport that's what you got to deal with do you feel like is it any different is winning a world championship for the first time any different than like winning a race as a 10 year old does it because i mean i think as as people who are far away from that level of sport it can seem like there's some special feeling, some special experience, and yet some people say, look, a 50 backstroke feels the same and hurts the <laughs> same whether you're going 23 or you're going, you know, 33. Yeah, the race definitely feels the same. <laughs> That's definitely true. I mean, it's a race is a race. Uh, I've always been a competitor, so mm -hmm. the racing really has never changed. But honestly, that's something I'm trying to uh, embrace. Uh, I think the more you look at it as just an authentic, competitive you know competitive drive competitive spirit yeah. uh the better the better i race personally you know if i look at a race the same way i did when i'm 10 there's a good chance i'm gonna race it really well and but the um the truth of the matter is it, it's it can't be the same it's gonna weigh on your mind different you know as i mean i'm in my mid-20s everyone anyone who's ever been in their mid-20s know, knows how stressful it goes uh financially uh stability relationships all that kind of yeah. stuff yeah. You're just you're in the blender i mean that's how life goes yeah. um so you know when you accomplish something like like that world championship with in the middle of all that shit going on it's yeah. it is just truly an amazing feeling it's it's something that 
definitely not not many people get to experience. Um, so embracing that, um, while at the same time not not allowing it to go to my head too much, you know, definitely enjoy it, uh, enjoy the success, but you know, just moving forward, acknowledging, okay, to get here, I I had to focus on myself, I had to focus on my swimming, and uh, you know, really not put any more yeah. pressure on myself to do it again, because that's you know that's how I was able to achieve that success right just do the same thing <laughs> that's a good perspective to have yeah. does any part of you so Lochte got a rule named after him because <laughs> he was pushing the boundaries yeah. any part of you think hey there's gonna be a rest rule <laughs> a rest rule it could happen you know it could definitely happen uh you know the rule the, the you know as people probably know now the rule that exists to where the DQ I was, I was teetering on the edge is the 15 meter rule so it's not yeah. like it's a specific backstroke finish rule right um, but at the same time, I don't think very many people realize I'm getting my hand on the wall a lot quicker than it seems. I got really long arms. Uh-huh. Uh, I think this, I'll be, I'll be perfectly blunt. Uh, the semifinals was a bad finish. It was a long finish. That's mm. for sure. But there's not a single doubt in my mind that at finals, I didn't get DQ'd. I'm 100% positive uh, on that. Yeah. Um, but do you think that should be the rule anyway? I, yeah, I, I think, I think it should, it should be. Because uh, otherwise, people dive under think, and can dolphin to the finish or well, something. Well, I mean, it's tough. I, I I think. I mean, it's really it's clear when somebody's trying to cheat the system and somebody yeah. just has a long finish. Um, right. You see it. In, I mean, it's the same thing people do in freestyle. People do uh-huh. it in butterfly. I mean, they get in there and they're just they're like, oh no, oh no, oh no. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it happens. And oh yeah. When. When you're on when you're doing backstroke and you got to use the flags and you're splashing and dashing i mean those flags are hard to see uh-huh. uh and the alternative is uh running into the wall with my head i mean sometimes i take the long stroke and <laughs> i think that that shouldn't be against the rules in my opinion uh backstroke indoors or outdoors <sighs> outdoor backstroke sucks you know what they need they need they need a. Uh, they got a line at the bottom of the pool for a reason. They need they need a little wire for backstroke, especially <laughs> outdoor. And you know what the worst is? People 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 think the sun is the worst, but actually it's worse on a cloudy day, because when you have a blanket of gray, uh-huh. there is there's there's absolutely no way to determine if you're going straight. Like if if you're only seeing the sun is at least a reference point. You know <laughs> you can at least say, okay, if I am burning my eyes, at least I can burn my eyes for the same direction you know for the whole race <laughs> versus if it's just a blanket of gray you're like okay i could be going sideways right now and i have no idea and then on top of that you got the wind to factor in so you know sometimes it's like there's no way to stay straight if the wind is intense enough yeah totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right thanks man appreciate yeah. it